Welcome to the Toe Business Podcast, your number one source for information on training, safety, business management, and everything in between. There's no business like Toe Business. Here's your hosts, Jeff and Brad. Hey, welcome to another show. Uh, we're going to touch on some some ideas that came from a request for show ideas a while back. Uh, a few of these seem to be common threads. Every time we ask for show ideas, we seem to get several uh, very similar suggestions on what to talk about. So uh, we're going to get into that. But uh, first, we've got an announcement we're pretty excited about. Brad? Yeah, uh, here joining us in season five, uh, we have a new partner um, joining Miller and Tracker, which we we support them very, or we appreciate them very much. But joining them as a partner of the podcast is ADD Auto Data Direct. Um, so if, if you're not familiar with them, um, they do vehicle owner searches, uh, lean processing, certified letters, um, MVDIS reporting, all that stuff. So we're glad to have them. Um, we believe in the services they offer, and we're, we're glad to have them with us. Yeah, we. Uh... Our, our, our towing company has been a, uh, we jumped on board with them very quickly when they uh, started offering uh, the availability of owner and lien holder searches here in Georgia. Uh, definitely has made our life much easier. Uh, you, know, you know the information's accurate. You don't have the delay uh, that you do when you're requesting this information from the local police department or anything like that. It keeps you out of the police department's hair for the most part. Uh, depending on how the policies and, and uh, laws are in your area. But if you do not know who Auto Data Direct is, I strongly, strongly suggest you check them out because they have made our life easier and uh, we have, uh, we've started using more of their services as be they become available and we, we're, we're really happy with what they offer and their customer service. And uh, of course, now we, we really appreciate their involvement becoming our, uh, a new partner for the, the show this season. Yeah, we've had a lot of people reach out, show interest, um, but we strictly believe in only partnering with um, products we believe in. Not that we don't believe in everyone that's uh, reached out to us, but the ones we do have right now, Miller, Tracker, and uh, ADD, we very much believe in and we'll put our name on you know, recommending them and the services they provide. So welcome aboard. Glad to have them. Um, hopefully it's a long relationship just like the others that we've um, had sign up so reach out to them if you got questions um, we're going to have them on to explain a little bit more what they do and, and what they offer and, and all that here some point in this season but for right now we're going to jump into uh, police rotations um, private impound lots um, municipality impound lots I should say third-party dispatching um, traditional police rotations and contracts. Um, it's the most recommended show topic we've had since we started this thing. We've put it off long enough, so it was time to, to get on it. We don't have all the answers, but we'll try. Um, so we'll start with that in just a minute. All right, like I mentioned, probably the most, most suggested topic, and I'm surprised we haven't hit on it before now, is uh, police rotation standards, ethics, third-party dispatch and police impound lots. Um, <laughs> I, I'm glad to say I don't have a lot of exposure to it, so I don't, I don't have a ton of input. Uh, I know what my gut feeling instinct is whenever I start hearing about this stuff, but uh, it's pretty much just stayed between the PD as far as, as I'm talking mainly about the, uh, when the PD gets involved in the actual impounding, the towing, and the storage. When it comes back to police rotation standards and the ethics involved with those standards, uh, I've, I've got plenty of opinions, probably, probably enough for three or four of these shows. So, uh, you know, just to get started, it, to me, I've been doing this since the 80s, and so little has changed since the 80s. It drives me nuts. I see everything around us. Everything else in our industry has changed um, from the availability of training to the technology in our trucks, all the technology in the office 
and, and inside the trucks and in our driver's hands uh, by way of smartphones, everything has evolved by leaps and bounds except these police rotation contracts. And, and you know, obviously some places have, have revamped what they were doing and rewritten the rules and stuff, but I think the overwhelming majority of police department rotations are either running under rules developed 20, 30 years ago, or they just don't have any rules at all, no standards set in place. And that drives me nuts. Um, we, we have, or, or I recently viewed a uh, local contract, and it's still referring to trucks that were used back in the 80s, early 90s. The, 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 the specs on the trucks required in the contract make no sense. They don't apply to anything anymore. Yet, this is what we're supposed to sign and live under. And what really drives me nuts is there's never a training requirement. So you're, you're putting, you're allowing a truck, an operator, a company to come out, play in that intersection. You got cars driving by, you've got all the rubberneckers gawking at you. People standing around sometimes a big wreck. Sometimes people stop, get out of their cars and, and watch and want to know what's going on. Uh, and there's, but we have no training standards, no safety standards set in place. Uh, you know, that guy that, that starts going to do that rollover, he may be, this may be his first rollover and he's never been trained on it. He doesn't know exactly what equipment to use, doesn't know what working load limits are. And you've got, you know, in some cases, a hundred soft targets standing around that wreck scene. And, and you've got these 10 to 60,000 pound winches pulling on stuff with, with rusty chains bought from who knows where. Uh, no ratings on them. And, and there have been cases in the past where things have broke and flown. And most of the times, most of the stories I've read where something broke, it was something being misused, something that was underrated, something that was damaged, something that was bent, you know, kind of like you, if you knew what you were looking at, you saw an accident waiting to happen or just with that operator. And I'm, I'm not beating on the operator. I mean, the, the, it's up to the owner to make sure that operators train safely, properly, knows what's on his truck, knows his limits. I mean, limits in his ability, limits in his truck equipment, limits in his rigging. Uh, so many guys, I, I still hear the phrase so often, if a warm body shows up with a driver's license, I'm throwing them in a truck. I, I know companies nearby that are still doing that. There's no vetting process. There's no on the yard training or, or formal outside training being required. And, and it is an accident waiting to happen. And we're all sitting here raising hell about our insurance rates, yet we continue to allow things to operate like this. Yeah, I've got a problem with everything as usual, but <laughs> the, the lack of standards, I mean, there's some some municipalities around here that don't have anything, let al they don't have any contract, let alone an outdated contract. There's no terms, there's no requirements, no criteria, there's nothing to hold people accountable. It's basically you just notify them you wanna be on rotation and you're on rotation. It's a joke. Um, I believe everything should have a contract. That noise, you know, we have, I guess I should preface this, we have a mix of everything that I'm about to say here around us. We have the helter skelter rotation that I just mentioned where there's no rules, no level of professionalism required, no terms, no nothing. We have RFPs that come out for quite a few municipalities where you have to basically buy the contract. It's a certain amount of money. Um, we have just straight up legit rotations where there's an actual contract and there's terms and um, it's easily easily it's easy to get your hands on the rotation call out sheets and all that and keep, make sure everything's legit and the police departments do it the right way we have we've actually had quite a few um, counties the sheriff's rotation start cleaning up their rotations kicking people off 
go from like 10 providers down to five, um, really try to standardize the, you know, the, the whole side of that. It's got to be easier for them to have people they know are going to show up and going to do it right. And, you know, and do, you know, in uniform and high vis with trucks, the right equipment. It's got to be easier on them. I don't know why they don't make the requirements harder and stricter. It's got to be way easier for them not to worry, have to worry about all this stuff. But anyway, um, and we have, we also have some exclusive um, contracts around here where it's just one provider for one municipality. Um, doesn't there's no money involved or anything there's no bid rfp nothing like that um now i will say most of those are pretty old and have been grandfathered in probably from 30 40 years ago and they just don't want to upset the the system if it ain't broke don't fix it so that's probably why they roll that way um but i have the the biggest problem with the ones that just let any any sh any schmuck with a truck tow form we have there's some trucks around here that um i don't know how they get them started every day and they're on rotation they show up they're allowed to be the face of that police department which is what we are when we show up to an accident scene we are the face of that municipality to some degree and they obviously don't care they show up they leave the intersection a mess they don't sweep anything up they don't clean up their their bumper cores or their the glass none of that stuff and they just let it go they just let it go and schmuck number one tells schmuck number two he should get a truck and get on rotation and all of a sudden a whole bunch of schmucks and then us and a handful of others doing things right spending money carrying the right level of insurance carrying the right um having the right trucks for the job showing up professional in uniform clean clean trucks on time, keeping records of everything, taking pictures, documenting everything. And it just, they go about their business, letting all this happen. That's what I have the most problem with. And I don't know who to, who to complain to because no matter who it is, it's always, you know, you, you get pointed to the next office. It's always the chief. No, the chief says it's the legal department. Legal says it's, you know, the city manager, city manager says it's the council or trustees and then back to the police. And I get it. They don't care. They have a lot of other things to worry about. I understand that, but there's obviously a problem. There's every municipality has complaints against, you know, these towers guarantee it. We have them and we try to do everything by the book. So I know that they're complaining about, um, the Schmuck Brothers, I know they're getting complaints, and they just, they just fall on deaf ears, and nobody cares. And that's my biggest problem with this whole thing. Yep. I I have never. I'm talking about one one local PD contract specifically. I have never once seen anybody disciplined for doing wrong or doing something dangerous, unless the department was brought directly into it. Um, I saw a guy get suspended because uh, a customer asked the guy, asked the tower, I had my car towed by you two months ago and it was $100. How come today it's 175 And the tower says, well, it's a police job. It's a contract. I have to charge you 175 for this tow. When the actual contract says no more than 175, it's your discretion as the tower or the owner of the company to decide anything up to 175. Well, that that customer turned around and went on the local newspaper. I, I don't even think it was Facebook back then. I, I it was something, some sort of forum. MySpace. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And uh he was friends with Tom or whatever that guy's name was, but uh, he was, uh, he went on and complained publicly that this is ridiculous, that the police department is forcing towers to overcharge people. That tow company got suspended for 30 days for doing that because that's actual violation. You know, it's, 
nothing says it says up to 175. So the, the, the sheriff gets all pissed off about it and, and tells the guy he's, he's, uh, he's suspended for 30 days. Well, all it took was that guy going and crying and moaning. He, he's back on in two days. So even, even that didn't, didn't get a, you know, any kind of real discipline. And the guy's back on. And it's the, so two times I've seen someone disciplined thrown off rotation temporarily. The other one was just a flat out direct face to face argument at a rec with, with, with the sheriff. And that's got what got him thrown off. So don't do things, don't clean up the intersection. No problem. You're not going to get in trouble for it. Uh, anything like that late to calls, you're not going to get in trouble for that. Um, so the, what little standards they have aren't enforced anyhow. And, you know, we were at a, a meeting a couple of years ago with one department and, and I said, you know, the standards have to be raised. Your the, the front of the agreement, you know, it shows the revision dates and, and this, these things go back. This thing's almost untouched for, I believe, about 20, 25 years. Uh, insurance requirements haven't gone up. I mean, nothing, nothing. Um, they've played with a couple little details here and there. But a guy that shows up with no vest, no broom, no shovel, hops in his truck, loads it up, leaves. There, there's, no, there's no discipline for that. It doesn't matter. That guy can continue to operate that way as long as he wants. And there's zero consequences. So I try making the, uh, I try making the point, you know, I'm, I'm told, I, I say, these guys aren't doing this stuff the way it's supposed to be. They're not even living up to this meager agreement you've got here. And uh, I was told that Jeff, everybody has the right. This is America. Everybody has the right to go get a record and, and go into business. I said, yes, you are absolutely correct, but they don't have a right to get on a PD rotation. There's towers and then there's PD towers. PD towers should be held to a much higher standard and have much higher requirements to, to stay on that rotation. The response given to me was, Jeff, these guys have been on the rotation for a long time. I went to high school with a lot of these guys and you must understand mm -hmm. I'm after knowing these guys all my life and going to school with them there. I am not going to be the guy to tell them that they can no longer make a living towing for, for this department. It's fine. I'll tell them. I did. You don't have a right to be on a towing list and everybody that gets pissed off that they're not being allowed on a towing list. You got to understand you don't have a right. I mean, if you're in the right area and you fit all the requirements, yeah, there should be a process to go through, but just to show up and say, hey, I bought a tow truck. Can I get on your rotation? Sure. Come on. That's ridiculous. It's I mean, ridiculous. I have the right to go buy a piano and a microphone and start recording my music and putting it on the internet. I have the right to do that. Doesn't mean it's not shit. Doesn't mean <laughs> I'm good at it. Uh, but I have that right. I mean, everybody has the right, but it doesn't mean they're good at it and they should do it. That's a joke. Oh, yikes. But you know, there's, gotta, gotta, there's, there's a lot of people in this situation, though, that it probably just works out for them. So are you okay with that? I mean, it, does this fit? I mean, there's a lot of people that probably don't bring this stuff up because their situation, they're doing okay. They're making money off of it. Maybe you just but, don't care that there's a few other guys messing things up because it's not really affecting you. So are you okay with the status quo? Or are you okay with just everything staying the way it was? Or, 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 or do you want to see these uh, agreements get more strict, have more requirements, and uh, I think, I don't, modernize? <laughs> I think this is, this is just going to turn into a therapy session, I think, for you and I. I think we're just going <laughs> to... That's okay. <laughs> the, airing, the airing of the grievances, like on Seinfeld. Um, what the problem I have is this happens. Schmuck one is on rotation. He gets called. Sorry, Schmuck one is uh he's in Gatlinburg. He's on vacation. He's a one man operation. No bias against one man operations. That's great. But 
it, no penalty, no nothing that he's just all of a sudden unaccept, unavailable. But if we, you know, we have multiple trucks and we say we're not, not available, uh, it, it would start a firestorm. We we they would demand they would they would demand our head on a stick. They would want us off that rotation so fast, and it's just a it's a joke. Um, quick story, local provider here for the it's a township responds to an accident loads it up no problem they go back to the lot they leave it on the flatbed which i have a problem with they leave it on the deck the wreck i don't know why i guess lazy um it was after hours i'll give them the benefit of the doubt the next morning they show back up to the lot and there's a human being crawling through the lot mangled legs he was still in the car he was still in the car and they and they transported it back to the lot i mean this is a whole and they get they got sued you know they're, they're probably going to get it's still going on this was years ago um sheriff's department got sued also but guess who uh Guess who still gets the tow? Guess who's still on rotation? Guess actually, they're the only one. They have that sole uh, exclusive contract for the, that township. Guess who still got it? Oh boy! <laughs> I mean, I know people make mistakes, but I mean, what I'm assuming is they get to stay on because the township and the, the county don't want to take responsibility because they have some liability in this as well. They're supposed to inventory, you know, and do what they're supposed to do on accident scenes. And obviously that didn't get done. There was a dude in the car still. He didn't go anywhere. It's not like he popped out after the wreck and then hopped back in before, while no one was looking. He was in there the whole time. Don't understand. So, you can yeah. take possession of that vehicle and not know there's somebody in it, but obviously it <laughs> happened. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You have to get in the car to some degree. You have to look in the car, get in the car. You know, you're checking for keys. You're doing all kinds of stuff. You should notice a person is in there. Yeah. And it was a car. It was like a Ford Taurus. It wasn't like a, a stretch Hummer where he could have been somewhere 20 feet in the back and you wouldn't have noticed him. Like, dude, you would have saw him. You, I don't know. Anyway, um, I have another grievance. Let's hear. We have a trend. We have a trend here um, locally of struggling municipalities. So underfunded police departments, cuts, um, budget cuts, everything. Basically, turning over any of any accident within the city limits to the state patrol. So if you had that contract for that municipality exclusively and you were used to getting 10 wrecks a week now all of a sudden you get none because the state patrol handles them. the state patrol has a rotation and it's the schmuck brothers on rotation for the state patrol because state patrol at least here has the lowest standards in the world and anybody can get on and, and tow for them so that's uh that's one of my major pet peeves along with the other 50 I just mentioned. Yeah. So it's, if you have, do you belong to several PD rotations? Maybe you have multiple locations. So you really get spread out across a bunch of municipalities. What blows my mind is, you know, you'll have one. We have one. It, it's fantastic. You, you go, you do your call. Everything is inventoried properly. Uh, there is an impound sheet given to our driver. And th the owner of the vehicle has to go to the police department, show proof of ownership, show proof of registration, show proof of uh, insurance. They give them a release ticket. They come to our window. Now we just need money and, a, and, a, and that release ticket. Okay. Anybody with that ticket. So there's like, there's a control maintained over that vehicle and that driver and who's picking it up. And that control is maintained primarily by the police department. 
I feel that's the way it should be. You go 20 miles down the road, no inventory, no impound sheet. Um, the, the people just show up. It's up to us to verify ownership. And thanks to Auto Data Direct, that's much easier these days. And uh, Zing. <laughs> and uh, so we know who they are, who can pick it up. But it leads to problems. Now, we have officers there all the time saying, hey, don't let them pick it up. There's a hold on this for insurance. Don't let them pick it up till there's insurance on it. How is that my job to verify they've got insurance? They can print any crappy piece of paper they want off the, the it doesn't verify they've got, and, and everything in Georgia is, is on file. I mean, they look up the, the tag for the car. They know whether it's got insurance on it or not. Why is it now being dumped in my lap? And you get all these officers saying, make sure they've got insurance before you let them have the car. Got news for you. Not my job. I'm not in enforcement. I'm here to tow a vehicle, get an illegal vehicle off the streets, and hopefully r return it to the owner in the streets once we're paid and they're legal. Uh, trying, you know, keeping everybody safe. So we've, we've, it's not our job, right? So I've gone to the head of that rotation and told him about this and he, he agreed 100%. He said, you're right. That is not your job. You should not have that on your back. That it's just not your job. Don't worry about it. I'll get with all my guys. Well, here we are two, three years later, and we're still being told constantly, make sure they got insurance, make sure they got registration. Uh, what, what really boggles my mind, that same department, they'll haul in a DUI suspect at 11 p.m. At 3 a.m., they're bonded out, and they're blowing up our phones wanting to come pick up their car. What? They're wanting to come pick up the car, not the person coming and getting them out of jail. They want to pick up their car. And uh, until recently, finally, all the towers kind of stood together and said, look, this is a dangerous situation. We shouldn't, you should not be requiring us to release these vehicles in the middle of the night. Nothing good is going to come out of that. There's no reason. Guy gets out of jail at 3 a.m. There's no reason he should be getting back in his car, especially in the case of a DUI. So they didn't care. They're like, hey, that's your job. We want, we want release 24-7. So we all kind of said, okay, we'll do that. But we're going to call you guys and require one of your officers to come out and be present before we get out of our car, open our gates, open our and, – and it seemed like as soon as we, <laughs> we drug them into it and made it clear it was going to be a major inconvenience for them, all of a sudden it was, okay, we had – we we – we thought about it. You're right. Uh, just released during normal business hours. So it wasn't until we, we made it clear we were going to be a pain in their ass before they changed their mind. But when it was all dumped on us, it was us. And, and here's the other thing, you know, if the department I was talking to that does everything right with the releases and the inventories and all that, if somebody comes so often, you know, we all have it happen. The customers, oh, what happened to this uh, Van Gogh that was in my trunk? Mm. I paid $3 million for that Van Gogh that was in the trunk of my Hyundai. Where is it? You know, hey, it's not on the inventory. Go fly a kite. Get out of here. It, it seems like the, the departments that won't give you an inventory sheet are the first ones to say, hey, we got a complaint about a Van Gogh in the back of a Hyundai, it's missing. You better go buy them a new Van Gogh. You know, they don't back us up at all. And I'm sorry. It, there's, there's a chain of custody. You, I mean, to me, the officer had custody of that vehicle. He's got the driver in the back seat of the car. If things are missing, why isn't it equal? All right, why is it automatically the tower? All right, the cop had custody of that vehicle until the tower arrived and then passed it off to the tower. There was no mention of anything being in the vehicle. We are not supposed to go through the vehicles. You know what it would look like to these people if we got on the side of the road and started popping trunks and pulling stuff out of the back seat to inventory ourselves? We can never get away with that. Do our own inventory, have the cops sign it? The cops not gonna sign that. So now all that is, is for nothing. So, but then they're gonna turn around and, uh, they want us to do it. Now we were taken to court years ago 
And the judge basically said, look, unless you have proof that the towing company, an employee of the towing company took the stuff out of your car, they're not responsible for it. They've got a fence, they have lighting, all this good stuff. Everything's locked up at night. Your car was locked. A criminal came on their lot, broke into their lot, broke the law, broke into that car and stole something. The record service is not liable for that. They took reasonable steps to keep everything safe. Someone else committed a crime against them and against you, the vehicle owner. And uh, it, it's, that's helped us out because now we know that's the deal. That's how it works here. You know, it gives us a little bit of a defense, but I, I just hate sometimes some of these uh, police departments, they, they seem like the motor clubs. You, you're guilty unless you can prove yourself innocent. And it's ridiculous because they had the car first. They have no, they can't verify whether the thing was in there, but they're going to take somebody's right. word for it. Who's just pissed off. Uh, yeah, the, the release procedures and the paperwork, the hours, um, just the overall release procedure. Why can't they get together and figure it out? Like, why can't they all be the same? And if you don't, the easiest thing in the world, if you don't know what to do, call around and ask one of the other, their departments hey what are your release standards procedures okay i think we'll copy and do the same way and if you are if you're not gonna you know just copy somebody's and you're a municipality when you want to do your own uh, policies and procedures involve us in the involve us we you know we're the one releasing the vehicles we see everything that goes on we know what's doable what's not what makes sense Maybe we think of something you don't involve us in the process. Don't come up with these terrible release procedures and just expect us to, to be able to do it and then change them in, in six months because they were stupid in the first place and they don't work. And now nobody, nobody knows what to do because you get the old, old procedures, you know, the officers on scene are telling them about the old procedures and we're running the new procedures. Yada, yada, yada. And it's just a nightmare. Luckily um, we use tracker thing. We can, keep track of each police department and what their you know their different procedures are because we tow for 43 police departments and every single one of them is pretty much different on what they require release tow ticket all these different terminologies hours we have to be open um what they need in the rates all that stuff like why can't you guys get together i know you go you go drink budweiser's the fop and you talk and you hang out why can't you standardize some of this stuff and make it easier for everyone <sighs> so when anyway. it comes to the standards on the uh on these uh rotations do you, do you think maybe if we all push to raise these standards do you think maybe it would lead to a higher level of respect for us and what we do we're always screaming about god do i dare bring up the first responder thing oh man i already regret bringing it up but You've got the people <laughs> that want, they, they, they seem to think we're going to magically gain a shit ton of respect if we can get designated by for, as first responders. No, a, a title is not going to get respect. We've got to hold ourselves to a higher standards. We have to get together and push for higher standards on these rotations. That's going to gain respect. When we start acting as professionally as we demand to be treated, we'll get more respect. Our entire industry we, will get more respect. If we want these things to change, it's on us to do it. The police departments don't care. They, they really don't care. They don't want any more work to do. They don't want to formulate a committee and appoint somebody to go through the procedures and standards and redo them. They don't want that. As long as it's, people are just letting it go, then great. They're good. They're just going to let it keep going. So it's on us to, to cause, you know, raise a little hell and get these things changed because it, it's just easier for them not to change them. So unless we do it, they're never going to change them. It's kind of like everything in this industry. We want prices to go up. Well, it's on us to get prices up. We want insurance to go down. Well, it's on us to get insurance to go down. We want this, we want that, but we don't want to do the work. We don't want to join state towing associations we don't want to join national towing associations we don't want to pony up money for lobbyists and uh, legislative efforts it's on us because nobody else cares about us but us 
Yeah. Hey, there's a new, there's a new grant. <laughs> you know, do you take it upon yourself to raise your own standards? You know, if we want them to raise their standards, do we, do we raise ours? And, and the big question there is, you know, if you've raised your standards, you operate more professionally than what's required. You have more equipment, you have better insurance, all that. Are you the guy that, that complains and makes a stink about the other towers who are not doing the same? I mean, they may or may not be living up to those lowly standards of the rotation of that 1982 rotation. They, they may, they may be compliant, but in your eyes, that's not good enough. Do you, do you complain about that or, or, you know, in one case, uh, you kind of touched on it a little while ago. We've got guys that'll just park their trucks on Friday, like a one man band. They'll park their truck on Friday and, and they don't answer the phone again till Monday. I mean, it's kind of good because we're more likely to get calls going around that 300 tow company rotation. But it says in the agreement, you will be available 24-7, 365 to take calls. And you will arrive within 30 minutes of receiving that call. It's in the agreement. And it's the, I think it's the only thing in the agreement that actually has a, a stated consequence. If you're unavailable when we call you, I think twice within so many months, um, you're going to be off for 30 days. Do it again in a year and you're off till the next go around, that type of deal. Um, but when it's brought up that these guys are not answering their phones, well, Jeff, you got to understand, it's just one guy with one truck. Everybody deserves a break. Everybody, You're right. They do deserve a break but they don't deserve to be on this towing rotation that has a requirement of answering the phone 24, seven, So now you're making rules and there's actually a, a, a written consequence and you, the, the department won't even enforce that consequence. Why have anything? Why did you bother writing that paper? Why did you bother coming up with that consequence? If you're just going to blow it off every time, you know, it comes up. So do you report it and, and does it do any good? Do you have anybody listening to you or, or I, I, I typically, I'm typically not the guy to go up and complain about other towers. I try to just worry about myself, but in, in a couple of circumstances, I felt it was necessary. And within a minute or two of sitting there talking and, and, and just trying to explain what my issue is, I, I start, in my own head, I feel like I'm sounding like the teacher off of the Charlie Brown cartoons. Wah, 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 because I feel, I'm pretty sure that's all they're hearing coming out of my mouth because they're, they're not paying attention. They don't care. And then I feel like an idiot because I realize I just wasted my time uh, to not get anything done as usual. So, uh, I mean, does it do any good when you do complain? Does it do any good? <coughs> no, not here. Um, <laughs> nothing changes really um, the only changes that have come about recently or have been nothing to do with us complaining it's just been for one reason or the other the sheriff's department finally decided they were going to kick some people off I mean, there's probably more to it than I know but so they kicked a bunch off and cleaned up their list complaining I don't think had unless somebody else complained I know we didn't but. But, you know, I, we just try to do our job. We don't like to complain. Sometimes I feel like you have to. Everybody's quick to complain on us. Um, but no, I don't, I don't think. Because the problem is I don't, I don't know who to complain to. It doesn't seem to be anybody's job or responsibility to run, you know, the towing program for these police departments. It doesn't seem to be anybody's job. Nobody's responsible for it. Nobody has an answer for any question. So, no, I, I don't think it's worth it. So here's, this is part of the problem you're talking about. We're told officer or deputy so-and-so is in charge of the towing rotation. If you try to get a hold of him, someone else calls you back and asks you what the issue is, what do you need to talk about? You go through the whole thing with him and then he says, okay, I'll take that back to the first guy you tried to call. I've got to talk to so-and-so about this. I'll bring your complaint to so-and-so. 
that's who I freaking complain to. Why can't I just talk to that guy? And I, I think it's just a smoke and mirrors thing, you know, just make it such an inefficient process to complain or discuss a problem, uh, hoping it just goes away. But that, that, that's happened again and again. It just gets brushed off onto this person, this person, this person. Then you finally think you're making headway. Oh, so-and-so got a promotion. They're not over the, the rotation anywhere. Well, who is now? This is something I asked recently. Uh, we had a couple of people retired. Well, who's over it now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's a yeah. good question. How do you not know? Okay, I understand towing is something they'd rather not even have to deal with. They, I'm sure they wish that these cars magically disappeared off the roadway. It'd be much easier for them, but that's, that's not how it happens. And this is a big deal. And the service we provide is pretty damn important. And, and, but in their heads, they just, they just want us to go away. They, they don't want us to be an issue. They don't want to deal with us. Um, I get it, but I don't get it. I mean, they, I don't think they understand how big a deal this is and, and what it means for us and our employees. Uh, you know, this, this is our world and, these little problems that they just brush off so easily, uh, you know, it, it can have huge effects on us and our guys. And uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, w I want that magic answer from somebody. If you got it, please let us know. Yeah. We have a trend here locally of whatever officers on light duty, maybe had uh, shoulder surgery or is on, is on light light duty restriction, they're in charge of the towing program. And then the minute they heal up and somebody else blows their Achilles, then he's in charge of the towing program. <laughs> and then it just goes around and around and nobody knows what the hell they're doing. They don't know the rules. They don't know anything. And it's just, just a hot potato. When you have a question or a complaint, it just gets passed and passed and passed. And like you said, smoke and mirrors or what some of us call the motor club damage um, response. We just pass it around, pass it around, pass it around, pass it around. Um, yeah, if you have an answer, great. I don't, I think it, if anybody had an answer, it'd probably be fixed by now, but please tell us. Well, maybe, maybe somebody has had an answer. Um, a few years back, somebody actually went through the trouble to develop what they call the national standard for towing rotations. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've got a copy of it somewhere, probably on an old laptop or something. Um, and it's pretty damn good. They put, they put, it just made a lot of sense. It was a lot of good requirements and, and, and but it, it's gotten, it's gotten a little dated by this point. Uh, some things would need to be changed, but if I've sent it to departments that are either developing a new agreement or maybe it's a new city and they want a, an idea of what should be. Uh, the standards that they, they put out there. And I, I don't know. I don't know if it's because it's like 10 pages long. They just, they just shove it under some other paperwork or what, but nothing I've, whenever I've provided that, nothing I've, nothing in that has ever carried over to the agreement they have, they've actually written. And we've been involved. We've consulted on two new towing rotations in the area in the past 12 years. And I don't know why they come to us. Now, we're not on this rotation when they come to us. There, so there's no, there's no bias. We're not in the fight, you know. And, and they spend months asking us to help do this, do this, do this, because they know, a lot of them know that we're on one rotation. We, we're the sole company on the best, tightest rotation we're on. And I think they know that. This city has a reputation for doing things right. And they come to us, you know, as unofficial consultants. What do you think about this? When you, so we'll spend all this time with them. And we do it voluntarily. You know, we're not asking to be paid. I'm sure there's consultants working on the same task that are being paid a boatload. We don't want it because we're just for the industry, the local industry. We want to help move things forward. And after months, they send us, they send us a sample of the final agreement or contract, depending on what they call it. There's, there's reasons why they call it one or the other. Um, when we see it, I don't think either time a damn thing we suggested ended up in the book. And 
it just ended up being a bunch of mumbled together crap from all the other lousy rotation agreements in the area. And, and we, we actually came across one that it literally had a page out of one city's contract. Then it had a page or two out of the state patrol agreement. Then it had, so in the end, nothing anybody suggested ended up in this contract. It ended up being something we did not recognize. We did not talk about. We did not see or discuss ahead of time. And it literally ended up just being copied and pasted pages. You'd go page to page and there would be different fonts, different uh, um, paragraph formats. I mean, everything looked completely different. And, and it's, it's, I don't understand how that happens. We, we offered great ideas. We've had that and they didn't even change the, um, like the, 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 the banner yeah. at the top and the bottom of the name of the city yep. they stole it from, you know, it was city A and then you turn to page two and the bottom says city B towing contract 1997. And you're like, what the hell is this? This is not even the right city. It's not even the right year. Uh, too lazy to even change that. And, yeah. Don't ask for help if you're not going to listen. Yeah. Um, surely everybody has heard of these third, third party um, dispatch platforms that come in um, mainly in buy. I, the police, city police towing contracts um, and handle all the dispatch and then sign up towing providers to do the towing. Um, there's one big one and there's a few more that have pop up, popped up recently that are, that are doing the same thing. So I'm not going to name names. Um, everybody knows who they are. I don't really even have an opinion on it, to be honest with you. Because I've talked to some people that just enjoy doing the towing and don't have to deal with anything else. And then I've talked to others that have lost, you know, huge multi-million dollar city contracts that obviously it crushed their business. So I don't, my gut makes me think it's probably not good for the industry, but I don't know enough about it. I know it's a hot topic right now. Uh, they're popping up all over. Um, but I, I don't have much to offer on that. I don't think it's good for the consumer. I don't think it's good for the vehicle owners. For the simple fact that all right, for the last five years, I've been operating under these standards at these rates. Well, these companies will often come in and to win the hearts of the towers, hey, nothing's going to change on your end. Don't worry about it. We're not taking a slice of your pie. That may or may not be true. I'm sure it changes town to town. So how are they going to make their money? Well, there's going to be some sort of surcharge, I would guess. I don't, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't had to deal with any of these companies that are out there doing this. But I've got to assume they're tacking on some sort of fee. So we've already got people screaming that our rates are too high. And the answer is to bring in a third party and make the rates even higher. Uh, you know, I hope we, hope we hear from some, from some people who've, who've gone through this. And, uh, you know, there's the big one that's all at the toe shows, but there's others. And, and usually if they believe that whoever comes in and starts a new idea, if people perceive that they're making money off of it, then they're going to try and jump on the coattails of that idea and do it for themselves. So I think that's probably the situation we're in right now. People are, are, are smelling smelling some possible uh, revenue off of these things. My problem, the only thing I, d I do have an issue with that I know I have an issue with, because like I said, I'm very unfamiliar with these things, is when you hear about them running an impound yard. Now the tower is just a tower. They're bringing it to somebody else's impound yard. Sometimes it's a police yard. Sometimes it's one of these third parties yards, I'm guessing. And yeah. You lose revenue, you lose control. Um, I just don't like it. I don't, I don't see why a third party has to get involved where two parties are fully capable of handling the situation. 
But one thing I am told over and over about these situations is that they, these third-party companies identify a problem. They know there's a municipality, normally a larger mu municipality, that just has a mess, a, a disaster of a rotation list. And then there's lots of problems, and that's how they get their foot in the door. Hey, Mr. Towing Rotation Officer, I could solve so many problems. We'll handle everything. We'll vet the towers. We'll keep track of them. We'll handle your dispatching. Boy, wouldn't life be nice if you no longer had to deal with these towers and we did it for you. I'm, I think they're using problems in a lot of cases caused by the towers on the rotations. <laughs> to, uh, imagine that. Uh, to get their foot in the door. Because, you know, if... If they could throw some sort of cost savings for these departments or revenue generation into the mix on top of we're going to solve all your headaches, it's, it's a way in. Yeah. And, and, and maybe, maybe if it's bad enough, maybe, maybe they do make things better. You know, now there's going to be standards probably higher than that, what was there. Um, you know, I don't know when it goes to a private company like that. I, I don't know what their ability and right is to pick and choose who gets on that rotation at that point. I don't know if there's any deals made where, hey, whoever's on needs to stay on or, or if it's just turned over to them, hey, find the right towers. Uh, so then we're back to hopefully towers that should be on a PD getting on through that process. If it, if it's a good vetting process, I mean, there's, I, I guess I'm like you, I guess I don't have an opinion either way. A, cause I haven't experienced it myself. B there's probably cases where it did help, but probably where there was a problem already and they're just coming in to try and fix it. And that's, that's the reasoning they're giving for why they should turn everything over to them. Do you have it anywhere up near you? Yeah. Um, quite a few, well, not quite a few, but many of the larger cities, the biggest cities in Ohio, um, kind of have these arrangements. It only, I don't agree with it per se, but again, the only place it does make any kind of sense are the big cities. You know, if you come in the small town, rural Ohio, and you have a population of 10,000, you don't need one centralized lot. You only, people are only driving to get across the whole county, you know, 10 minutes. So I guess in New York City, I guess maybe one central lot makes sense because there's not a lot of real estate anyway. And there's a mass amount of people and confusion. And maybe that makes sense. I don't know. But for the most part, some of these places that have it here, I don't think it makes sense to do it. Um, you lose revenue, obviously. Um, storage, you lose the tow out. I mean, how many cars do you tow out of your lot just solely for the reason that they're already in your lot and it's convenient and fast and easy and you can cut them a break? Um, I, I don't like that trend. I know that's gaining some popularity. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then don't forget, I mean, there's the police departments that are getting into the towing game themselves. Mm -hmm. They're buying tow trucks. It, it's, I, I don't, I don't understand that one. I mean, there's, there's already an officer shortage and you're going to start dipping your toes into an industry that has a driver shortage. And, and I don't like, I don't like blurring the lines. Yeah. You do your job. You arrest people. You, protect and serve and I'll do mine. We'll tow the car, we'll storm, we'll get them back to the right people or get them where they need to go. And that's it. And we don't need to complicate this anymore. But yeah, I, don't, I, I don't think a, a city or a state should be in the business. I know they have to collect money to operate. That's obvious taxes, but to dip into a private business to make a profit, Revenue, it just makes no sense to me. It's not what government is for. And yes, the police departments are government. It, it's not what they're there for. They're supposed to 
collect enough in taxes to provide the services they need to provide. They're not here to be in private business. That, that drives me nuts. The, the third party people we were just talking about, you know, it's a private business. If they can get in, make headway, make money, then, you know, that's, that's how things work. But to have a police department jump into the game or, or I'm just talking about towing. I mean, it's, I don't know. Like if you go to a state park and there's like a concession stand, should the state really be running that concession stand? I'm sure a vendor would come in and run it for them. I, I just, I just don't think the purpose of government or any of these departments or, or anything like that, I, I don't think they should be in the game of business. Oh, government. I can rant on government for a while. Want to um, just keep do, going, do another three shows while we're sitting here? <laughs> but we, there is a situation um, that we are aware of that has gotten pretty uh, nasty. Let's get into a mess that I, I know a little about. I'm, uh, I'm close enough to where it scares me, far enough away to where it doesn't really involve me. But, it, but it, it makes the news here. And uh, that's what's going on in Mobile, Alabama. Apparently, I didn't know this in the beginning. Okay, you start seeing the headlines. You see the news coming out of there, out of Mobile. And the news stories are just, I mean, they're awful. My gosh, we found this entire network of PD towers that uh, are... Uh, they're scamming everybody. They're ripping people off. They're overcharging. Next, you start seeing stories about the, the owners of these companies being arrested, trucks being seized. I mean, every bad thing you could think about was being said about these towers. I don't know any of the towers. I don't, I don't know what they were or were not doing. But where it gets really ugly, it, it, apparently the police department down there does some of their own towing. I don't know why they do some, not all, or just stay the hell out of it. I don't, I don't know why that is occurring, but a couple months after these towers were arrested and I'm going off just things I've read in news articles, you know, online newspapers out of mobile, these towers were arrested. They were just drug across the coals in the local media Trucks were taken, seized. I believe they've been returned. I, believe, I read an article the other day that said the trucks have now been returned because a judge said it was an unlawful seizure. I hope that's the case. Um, but a couple months after they were all locked up and the trucks were taken, and they're, I, I got to assume they're pretty much put out of business or, or, or at least heavily damaged. And again, I'm not, I'm not sticking up for the tow. I don't know them. I don't know what they were or were not doing but it actually came out in the paper that the police department was busted for doing the same exact thing. The cars they were towing, the cars they were storing, they have now been caught overcharging. They weren't locked up. Their trucks weren't seized by anybody. They just put out a statement in the newspaper that said, oops, sorry, we'll try to do better in the future. So if you read the news stories that have come out in their own local newspapers, they were both caught doing the same exact thing. It's been going on for years. The towers, the towers, I'm guessing if this is as bad as it seems in the stories I've read, you know, they could have legal fees and, and damage to their business in the hundreds of thousands of dollars at this point, because it's been going on uh, probably a year, year and a half now. And what happened to the police department? Oh, sorry, we'll try to do better. makes my head want to explode. How, how can that situation exist? How can that amount of, I, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know. I would have known nothing about this if you hadn't said anything. Um, I don't like talking a whole lot about stuff. I don't know all the details, but if they were doing stuff illegally and the act, you know, all the accusations are true get them. If they weren't, stop. Uh, I think usually in a situation like this, I think there's wrongdoing on both sides. Um, I don't know. But just 
it's scary to me that a police department would do this, um, take these measures, and the fact that maybe some other police department somewhere is seeing it and thinks they should do the same thing, and then it's the last thing we need as an industry is to get attacked from police departments and municipalities. We get it from enough places already. There's enough places threatening our businesses and, and the amount of money that we bring in. We don't need this. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, the bad part is police departments, it seems like if they do something wrong, they just say, oh, we're sorry. We'll, we'll do better. We'll, we'll, sorry about that. We, there's no repercussions. There's no um, no damage to them. You know, they're, they're the police. And, and we're the ones that get screwed. You know, and there's a situation, like I mentioned earlier, they, where, where they brought in the car and left it on the flatbed and there was a, a person in the car. The county, the sheriff department, um, and the township got sued, and so did the private towing company. Guess which suit is still going and which was thrown out? I have yeah, no. You guessed it. That <laughs> <laughs> you guessed it. The towing company is, you know, that. and I, I don't want to sound like they haven't like admitted that they did something wrong and they're denying it and causing this big thing because they're not. I'm, from what I know about it, they admitted that obviously a, a uh, lapse of judgment or procedure or whatever took place and something bad happened and, and uh, you know, they owned up to it and there's no way to rectify it. I mean, you can't take the guy out of the car and rewind time and, and do better, but they're still paying money to fight this, to go through court, to, you know, fight. I forget what the people are seeking the, you know, the um, monetary amount of money they're looking for to squeeze out of this time company that doesn't have it. Um, but they're, they're being drugged through the mud and guess who's not, you know, that municipality, that police department. It's not fair. Um, but that's, that's, those are the rules that we're playing by right now. You've been listening to the Toe Business Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it five stars and go back to listen to previous episodes. Also, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and like us on social media. If you have a suggestion or question for the show, please email us at info at toebusinesspodcast.com or send us a message on social media. And remember, there's no business like Toe Business.